The following video will assist you with setting up Seabell Mobile on your mobile device. It is important to note that we already have ports forwarded and are using a DDNS service in this example. This will require additional steps, so please feel free to contact technical support for any assistance with that. Once you open up the app, you'll be brought to this screen here. It should say live at the top with a person icon on the upper left hand corner. Go ahead and select that person icon and now select server list. Now select the icon on the upper right hand corner and here we're going to add our home setting. Now this is to be used when you're at the location of the camera or recorder using that local Wi-Fi. Okay, so we have our local IP address then we'll put a colon and then the HTTP port at the end. Now port 80 is by default, but you can choose any number in the reference field that you would like. Okay, we'll name it home, enter our username and password. Go ahead and select done and then save. Now you'll notice the status symbol has turned green. This device is now active since it's on the Wi-Fi. Now we're going to add the away setting. So we'll go back to add device. And in this example, we're using our DDNS. And you could also use a public IP address. Okay, but at the end of it, we're going to include our HTTP port. So colon HTTP port, which is 80 in this example. Give it a name of away. Enter the username and password. Now we'll select done. And again, we'll just select save. Okay, so you can see the Wi-Fi is still active. So I'm going to go ahead and disable the Wi-Fi on my phone. Okay, once I did that, now the away setting is now online and active. Now we'll go over live view, playback, and backup. So we'll go back to the live page. And where it says away there with the three little dots next to it, if you have multiple devices, they will be listed there and you can choose them. Okay, now we'll select the four little squares in the bottom of the screen. This is our different layouts, one channel view, four channel view, nine channel, etc. Okay, so we'll go back to a one channel view. We'll select one, that is channel one on our DVR. Okay. And just to show you what it would look like in a four channel grid. I'll go ahead and load that up there. All right, and now we're going to show you how to do backup. So to do backup, would we'll you go back to a one channel view and then select the little record icon in the center of the screen. Okay, just go ahead and confirm these directions here. All right, and now it should say remote playback at the top of your screen. So you want to select your device. So we're in the away setting and we're going to choose camera one. Okay, and then you have a little clock there. You can select your date and time. And then the timeline, you just slide left and right with your finger. Now we're going to back up footage directly to your device. To do that, you're just going to select the starting point on your timeline and then select the camera icon. Once you do that, it'll turn orange. That means it's active and it's downloading directly to your device. When you uncheck it, it's now done. So now select the icon on the upper left hand corner and go to file. That's the video we just took, and that's where your, your video will download as well. The last thing that we'll go over in this video is push notifications. We'll go ahead and back out of what we were just in and select the icon on the upper left hand corner, and now select push settings. We'll go ahead and add this here, select OK, tap on our device, and then send the slider to the right. 
This will now enable your push notifications for, in this example, our away device. So now if you select on trigger a push message, you can choose either to give you a live image or remote playback. And the second thing to look for in this screen here is motion. In this example, we're only doing motion. As you can see, there's a variety of options, but here in this example, we're just gonna do motion. Okay, so motion's enabled on all four channels. So we'll just go ahead and leave that enabled. Now we'll go ahead and save at the upper right hand corner at the little save icon. Okay, so now those are locked in. And we'll go ahead and trigger an alarm. And we'll show you how to get to the notifications menu. And we'll show you what it looks like when you actually get the alarm. Okay, so there's a push notification. And now if you select on a notifications icon, It'll bring you here, and then it'll list the notifications. I hope this video has helped you. Uh, please contact technical support if you have any more questions. Thank you for watching.